Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Tani, and today we have an emergency. Uh, this almost never happens on this channel and probably won't ever really happen again. Um, see, this is not a donation reward. This is not just a my choice. It is kind of a my choice, but it's not just that. We have a, a sub to the channel who has never seen this movie. And that's inconceivable to me, as Vizzini would say. Um, this movie, Kung Pao Enter the Fist, shaped my childhood. It shaped my sense of humor growing up. Um, story time. So I first saw this movie uh, because of a friend. I had a friend named Derek who showed me this movie when I was over at his house one day. And since then, I've seen it probably a couple dozen times at least. At least. There's so much of it that is quotable. So much of it that just it has made me cackle like a mad bitch. <laughs> so much of it that is just so ridiculously funny. And sure, there are some things that didn't age well because this came out in 2002. But it's it still holds up for the most part. Um, so for those who don't know, Kung Pao Enter the Fist is a satire. It is a parody of kung fu movies. But it is not just a parody, because anyone can do a parody. This is what might be one of the first ever, I, I don't know for sure, obviously, um, I, I might be completely wrong on this, but it's at least the first one, or the earliest one that I know of, but it could be one of the first ever abridged pieces of content. If you've ever seen Dragon Ball Z abridged, Helsing Ultimate abridged, Yu-Gi-Oh abridged, you understand what I'm talking about. Where fans take the original media and do their own dub of it. But make it purposefully comedic and uh, satirical. This is basically literally that just with a lot more effort put in <laughs> um like made into an actual fully budgeted film so that alone is impressive um but it's even better when you realize that the creator of this he is the writer the director the producer and the lead actor in this film. It, he, Tommy, was sewed this. And that's really, really fun. But unlike The Room, this movie is actually good. It's not like the best movie ever made, necessarily. It's not like a perfect film. But it's so iconic and legendary at this point. I've literally heard people randomly quoting this when I've gone to conventions. Not even dressed up as the characters. I've just heard them quote this movie. And I've randomly quoted this movie at times. It is so damn good. So damn funny. So... Yeah, it, it, it's probably the only time on this channel you're going to see a notable non-blind reaction from me. The only time you ever might see one uh, otherwise is like if I do a series and maybe I've seen the first couple episodes a long time ago. Like what happened with Pandora Hearts. Um, that Where it's like, oh, I, I saw it like a decade ago, but I don't remember much of anything about it. So it's... 
it's not really it, it's kind of seeing it again especially from a new perspective and all um that's a lot different we'll say than than this because this i've seen many times over and definitely a lot more recently than a decade ago it's it's just really good and we're doing this so this one sub of mine can see this movie and hopefully see it through like also what makes it funny to me so yeah <laughs> not really much else to say uh, I'm not going to spoil what happens, of course. We're just going to have to watch to find out. Uh, but if you're watching, my dude, get ready for one hell of a trip. Uh, you're going to be questioning a lot. <laughs> um, so let us get this going. So, just heard a noise come from outside or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Uh, there was another post credit scene I forgot about, like, after all the credits, um... Basically, uh, the master was, when he, when he was lying on the ground, it was another, like, outtake. When he was lying on the ground, like, uh, dying, um, when they thought, like, him, uh, the girl and the dog were all dying. Um, there's, like, a hawk picking at him, and he's just complaining about it the entire time. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, that's Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Uh, masterpiece from 2002 that's not actually a masterpiece but is so goddamn funny and just brilliant it's it's so brilliant it is a, an abridged version of this uh old 70s kung fu movie um that just satirizes it to all hell in, in such a bizarre out there ridiculous way like i've seen dragon ball z abridged i've seen helsing ultimate abridged i've seen some of Yu-Gi-Oh abridged it's like none of them are this fucking weird they usually stick to the for the most part to the original stories they just you know make them more of a comedy they make them funnier, add in little jokes, and, and, and change some of the voices up or whatnot. But with this, they just did their own thing and said, like, fuck, fuck everything. We're just going to, we're just going to have fun. Um, I assume, I don't know for sure, but I assume that Steve Odekirk was probably a fan of the movie... Um, and, and decided to make this kind of as a, uh, in a way, a love letter to it. Kind of just like playing around with it and, and joking around and, you know, satirizing it just for the fun of it because he loved the movie so much and wanted to do something goofy like this. Um, I, I don't know for absolute certain, but yeah, like this movie, like, growing up just was kind of a big deal for me like all my friends watched it and we all quoted it it was like I, I again I've heard it quoted in conventions and I didn't start going to, to conventions till after I was graduated from high school so think about that um that was like after 2011 so that's a good amount of time after it came out almost 10 years well 
I didn't start going to conventions right after I graduated, so it, it definitely had been at least 10 years. I think the first YomaCon I went to was in 2013, I want to say. Yeah, and the first Pony convention I went to was in 2013. Well, 2013, I think, was just the year I started doing conventions. Um, I think. Um, I might have done uh, one in 2012, but I'm not 100%, and I don't think I did. But either way, the point is, the fact is I've heard that spoken at, at, at conventions, uh, different lines from this. And obviously, again, growing up, like, friends and all would say it all, would say this stuff all the time. We would quote these, uh, these lines and these jokes and... Even the laughing and whatnot, the song, the little, like, song jingles in it. It's just, it, it shaped me growing up. The humor shaped, shaped me so much, and it's like, coming back and watching it again, it's like, it, it still makes me laugh. Like, I was giggling, actively giggling over most of this movie. It's so actively absurd. It's so actively weird and just dumb. It, it, it is dumb, but that's the appeal of it. It's so dumb that it actually rounds about to being hilarious because of it. It, it, it. I wouldn't, like, even consider it alongside the likes of, like, those so bad they're good kind of movies. Because I, I genuinely don't think this is bad. It's not poorly made. It, it, it's it's actually extremely well made. Because you have to think, this was their intention. They took an old uh, martial arts film and made a parody out of it. It was meant to be stupid. It was meant to be silly. It was meant to be ridiculous. That was the point. And they succeeded in that. Extremely well. Like, for what they were trying to accomplish, the acting was rightly silly and, 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 and ridiculous. The noises they were making, the uh, scenes and stuff that were added, like with the cow and all. It's like, it, it just, it was so over the top. That it's just, it's wonderful. It's so funny. It's so entertaining it, it's like you could watch this so many times and never get tired of it i have so i can say that from experience it's just so damn good every time i see it and it astounds me that some people have never even heard of it because again it was everywhere growing up like people were talking about it all the time like i wouldn't say like it was like this big pop culture phenomenon or anything no never reached that kind of status but like i heard it all the time like in school again it was everyone was quoting it and and just re uh repeating the jokes and 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 the taco bell jingle and everything it was like so constant in my life it's it's weird to think that there are people who haven't seen it it's weird to think that it maybe it wasn't as far reaching as as i thought and maybe it was like okay my group of like my area the my the friends and classmates i had in in my area knew about it and all but i i don't know but it's like, it's just so weird to think about because it's like, it's such a distinct, strong part of my childhood. So it's like, it's like finding people who haven't seen like the Yu-Gi-Oh movie in theaters, getting one of the uh, pro promotional cards from going to see it in theaters. It's like, I know there's a lot of people who haven't done that. Who, when the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie came to theaters, didn't go and see it in theaters to get the promotional cards and everything. But it's like, everyone around me, in my neighborhoods and stuff, did that. 
I went with friends to go see it. It's like it was such a core memory for me. And again, it shaped my childhood in a way. That it's just, it's weird to think that other people did not experience that because it's so vivid to me. And, and the thing is, logically, I know that a, that a lot of people probably have not seen this movie or Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie or, or a lot of the things that I grew up with. Logically speaking, of course. But it's, it's just like a little mental thing that my, that, that, that my brain pulls on me. It, 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 it's, it, it, it's weird, but it's like my brain is telling me that people not knowing about this is equivalent to people not knowing about Star Wars. And, and I know that's stupid, but that's how like strong of a connection I have with this movie. That's how deeply this became a part of my life growing up. So yeah, it's it's just it's one of those things that just makes no sense to me. But I also understand why it doesn't make sense to me if that makes any sense. <laughs> um but yeah, th this movie is obviously very, very silly. It, it's a parody. It's it, it sets up for a sequel that was never going to happen in the first place. Like that, it was very obvious that was never going to happen. That wasn't the point. It was, it was purposefully sequel baiting as a joke, uh, just like Spaceballs does. That that was that was literally the joke. But it also kind of sucks because the sequel to this could have been fantastic. Um, the voices were hilarious, especially. Um, Betty's voice was just fucking ridiculous, and every time he laughs, it just sends me. Um, Ling's voice is great as well, with all the noises she makes. Um, and I love how just nonchalantly and, and unceremonious, unceremoniously, I got there, uh, how unceremoniously, uh, Wimp Low is killed. Like, he's just, he's just dead. It's so unceremonious, so out of nowhere, and it's just, he's just gone. And it's like, all right. Um, and it's funny, because the movie actually starts out pretty dark, too, but it, it just goes into this silliness. Because it's like, with the very beginning of the movie, outside of, obviously, the, the baby fighting, uh, Betty, uh, you have, like, the fact that Betty did pretty notably and violently murder this family. He murdered the father at the door, and then though it doesn't show it, you know he murdered the wife and the other children as well. Like, that's pretty fucked. That's pretty damn dark. But the movie doesn't focus so much on that. Like, yeah, that's the Chosen One's uh, driving point, getting revenge for his family and everything. But in end, in the end, it focuses more on the comedic aspect, the, the parody, the joke, rather than the actual serious start. It, it basically subverts that idea of like a lot of movies or whatnot doing that. And obviously there were also a lot of references into here from like product placements with Taco Bell. And there's uh, the references to the Matrix that are in the, the scene fighting the cow. Um, it, it's, just, it's, it's just wonderful. It's just absolutely wonderful. It's such a damn good movie. Like I said, it, it's not technically speaking perfect. I wouldn't put it up there with the likes of 12 Angry Men or um, The Green Mile or The Menu, the three movies that I do consider perfect. I wouldn't put it up there with those at all. It's only those three movies still. 
that I consider perfect. Uh, but th this movie isn't trying to be perfect. It's not trying to be that kind of film. It's it's so different than anything I've seen before since. I've never seen another movie like this. I've seen other parodies and satires. Nothing like this, though. Nothing with this kind of humor. With this kind of silliness and randomness and bullshit, let's be honest. I've never seen anything like this. That doesn't necessarily mean that other movies and whatnot like this don't exist. I've just not seen them. The closest I can get is the Team Four Star Abridged stuff. Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged is not Team Four Star, but you get the point. Um, that kind of Those kind of Abridged series are the closest I could say to compare that to. But it's still not quite the same. It's not quite the same amount, the same kind of humor. Like, like I said, with the abridged series, they do tend to follow more of the plot and do tend to like keep it pretty on track. With this, it's just they just go nuts, a lot of nuts. It's pure insanity from start to finish, pretty much. Nothing makes sense. Barely anything is explained. Like, you, you don't know why the Evil Council are French aliens. No, it's never explained. Nothing about that is ever explained. Are all French people aliens? Is that what it's trying to say? We don't know. We, we have no clue. And... Like, on top of that... What is the deal with the tongue? Like, what are the, uh, like, what is, what is the deal? What is the tongue's origin? Why is it a thing? Why does the chosen one just born with it? And, and like, what are all the tongue's abilities? Why can it just stretch out that long and spin the pyramid ship around like that? None of it adds up at all. It makes no sense. But it's not trying to. It's it's trying to be stupid. It's trying to be silly. It's trying to throw in the most random bullshit possible because that's the intent. That's the point. And it it mostly holds up. Most of the humor and everything still works. There's only a couple things that just didn't age well. And yeah, it's unfortunate. It's just a product of the time. Some things that were just super awkward or very cringy, I guess you could say. Um, and, but there's not even a lot of that. There's very little of that, honestly. Um, all in all, it still holds up. It's still fun. It's still ridiculous. It's not meant to be taken any level of seriously. And it's just something that I, I wanted to share. Because I found out someone had not seen this, I just, I needed to share it. Like I said, it's usually my code that I don't do non-blind reactions. I'm honestly against that idea because it makes no sense to me. If you're not blind, how can you be entertaining for your viewers? Part of the enjoyment of a reaction is to see someone's reaction to something for the first time. That's that's what the entire point of doing a reaction is. To have people watch you and, and view your first time experience experience some experiencing something. It's like it's it's the same issue I have with people who play like especially story based video games non blind on like YouTube and stuff, like let's plays. Like if it's like a game like I don't know mario or tetris like i'm talking like early mario stuff then that's that's fine because those really didn't have a story or didn't really focus on it much um it was definitely more about the gameplay and all um but more modern story-based games it's like why would you bother it's like if you're not blind the the big points of people seeing your reaction to certain plot elements and 
and, and surprises and whatnot is gone. Like, there'd be no reason to do a Let's Play of Detroit Become Human non-blind because the appeal of doing a Let's Play to that is seeing the reactions to the story and the themes and ideas. If you're watching someone do it non-blind, there's no point. And, and the same goes for a lot of reactions. If you're, if you're watching, if you're seeing someone watch something, What's the point if they're not experiencing it for the first time? That's why I don't like doing that. And really the only exceptions I've made are, like I said, if it's a series that I haven't seen in a long time and I, and I haven't finished. Like, oh, I haven't seen this series in like 10 years or so. Um, I'm a different person at this point, so I want to give it another chance. I saw the first few episodes, but never continued past that. It's like, yeah, I've done that a couple times where it's like, okay, let's get past the first few episodes. And then everything from that point forward is new. Um, and it's like, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. But like, if the, if you'd seen the entire series, like I'm not going to react to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I absolutely adore the series, but I've seen it all many times. Reacting to it would make no sense. But if I had seen, like, the first couple episodes of, well, let's say Pandora Hearts again, it's like I'd only seen, like, a few episodes ten years ago, and I don't even remember everything. So watch, getting through those again and watching all the new stuff afterwards is the point. Watching the, the stuff I'd already seen, again, is just a way to basically recap myself to get back into it. And just because I don't like doing a series incomplete like that. <laughs> um, but with a movie, it's even harder because it's like, it's very unlikely that you've not watched a movie all the way through. I mean, I guess it can happen. And it definitely has happened. But it's, it's rare that that kind of thing ever happens. Um, the only times, like, for example, I've ever watched a movie and, and not finished it in one go is literally if I've fallen asleep. If I fall asleep watching the movie, like, yeah, of course I don't finish it in one go. But that's, like, the only times. Because otherwise, if I'm watching a movie, I'm, I'm not going to, like, pause it halfway through and get back to it later. Like, who, who's going to do that? Why would you do that? You just watch it all the way through. That's the point of a movie. Otherwise, it would just be a, a show, a TV series. Um, so, yeah, it's like, normally I wouldn't do this, but again, it's like, this movie shaped me so much, I had to share it. And it's like, this person could have just watched it on their own on their own time and everything, it probably would have been fine. But it's like, I also haven't seen it in quite a while, outside of like a couple random clips here and there. So I wanted to watch it in its entirety again, as well anyway. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I want to share this with them. I want to not just have them see this, but I want them to see why it's so funny to me and how it's so funny to me. I want to share, like, my experience with it, even though it's not blind here. It's still my experience in how funny it is to me. But like I said, this is probably not going to happen again. It's like, I don't think there's going to be another movie where I'm... I'll feel the need to do this. I, I I just don't really think there's going to be. This is like a really special exception. So you're probably not going to see like another non-blind reaction on this channel. Definitely not a movie. And, and if it's a series, it'll only be like one of the ones like I mentioned, like Pandora Hearts, where I've seen some episodes a long time ago but never finished. And I'm just watching the episodes I already did because I don't want to leave it incomplete <laughs> and to recap myself. That's the like the only times you'll see on this channel going forward 
me reacting to something I've already seen. So, yeah, don't expect this to be a common thing or anything. <laughs> um, but it was still fun. It was exceptionally fun. Getting to watch this again, laughing and giggling like a little schoolgirl, which also is surprisingly affirming to me. <laughs> Yay, Pride Month. <laughs> uh, it, it's like, I didn't, I, I didn't even think about that until I was saying it. Um, like, giggling like a little schoolgirl is surprisingly affirming to me. Probably because I never got to grow up as the girl I am. And, you know, never got that childhood I should have had. But yeah, um, let's not get too serious there. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it was just, it was a really fun experience nonetheless. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed, even though it was not blind. And if you hadn't seen the movie before, I really hope you enjoyed the movie. Um, because like I, I said, this, again, helped shape my childhood and my sense of humor. It was just instrumental for me growing up. One of those movies that just was part of me, part of my childhood, part of my life. And it holds a very special place in my heart because of that. It's like video games that I grew up with that I, I wouldn't necessarily play nowadays, but I hold a very special place in my heart because they shaped me growing up and shaped my love for gaming. Stuff like Sly Cooper. It's like, shit, I loved Sly Cooper growing up. Jack and Daxter. Tony Hawk's Pro, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, I probably would play again, though, to be fair. Um, there is the, the 1 and 2 remake on uh, the Switch. Maybe I'll get that one day. Um, but yeah, you, you get the point. It's like this movie was just so important to me. And just really did wonders for me growing up. Also, fun, funny thing about it, like, Betty changing his name and everything is, like, not, he, he's not trans or anything, but it kind of, it, it kind of gave me some, some nice vibes watching this again after having come out as trans and everything. You know what I mean? Um, either way, tell me what you thought down in the comments below. And thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.